principles and the truths of the kingdom of God. He was approachable. He made himself an open book to all that would seek after him. He did all that was necessary in order to reach people with the gospel. Those that were inside the ark of safety and those that were outside of the ark of safety. The message was clear that the kingdom of God had come and it was their opportunity to hear what thus saith the Lord. Whether he was speaking to a multitude or whether he was speaking to a beggar on the side of the road or whether he was approached by a woman at the well. Mm -hmm. He still made the gospel message, the kingdom message, real and personal to all who would hear it. He himself was the embodiment of the living word. When the devil sought to tempt Jesus during his time in the wilderness, Jesus rebuked him openly with the word of God. He said in Matthew 4 and 4, he said, listen. But he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. When Jesus spoke, his words alone commanded attention. You couldn't just hear him and not respond. There was something about his character. There was something about his attitude. There was something about the way he approached you and the way he delivered what he had to say. It was humbling. It was settling. It was something that the itching ear would give ear to because Jesus was unlike anybody else who had come before him. He was more than a prophet. He was more than a preacher. He was more than just a good man. He was the son of God. Mm -hmm. The Bible says in St. Mark 1 and 21, when Jesus was speaking, the Bible says, and they were astonished at his doctrine. For he taught them as one that had authority and not as the scribes. Mm -hmm. His message was clear. His message was powerful. His message was vibrant. When you heard him, you were moved to a conclusion that he was either not who he said he was, or either he was indeed the Son of God. Thank God that God's word is living. The Bible says in Hebrews that the word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword, dividing the soul and spirit. Giving, give, giving truth to the inward parts so that we that hear it might believe. What a mighty God we serve yes. who impacts us with his word, opens up his mouth so that we might know truth and be able to discern the power of God from the mouth of God as we give ear to his word. In our story, this is an interesting story, but in our story, the disciples had asked the Lord to explain a parable. And the Lord would often use stories or just his mere words, but in parables which would express a spiritual thought or a godly principle. The essence of the kingdom of God, the essence of the message of the kingdom is that the kingdom has the ability to change your life. The word of God has the ability to change your life. And as Jesus was communicating this story, he was speaking of a wise servant and a servant who was not so wise. And he was making an effort to communicate to the disciples that they themselves had a responsibility to be faithful. Good, bad, or indifferent, the one to whom much is given, mm -hmm. much is required. So Jesus was communicating this to his disciples, letting them know that the kingdom of God was such that the Lord of the house had the authority to provide and meet the needs of all that were under his lordship. Mm -hmm. 
So therefore, they had a responsibility to be faithful. They had a responsibility to watch. They had a responsibility to be diligent in the things that they were given to do. Everybody has a task to do. Everybody has an assignment. I don't care if you're a single mother, you have an assignment. I don't care if you're raising your family by yourself and you are the head of the household, you have an assignment. I don't care if you're on Wall Street, I don't care if you have a high corporate position, you have an assignment. There are certain things that are expected of you because when much is given, much is required. It doesn't mean you're an unbeliever or a believer. What it means is that God has designed us such that we all have a task to do. And if God has ordained it, we are responsible to carry it through. Jesus tells the parable in this story of a Lord of the house who is returning from a wedding. And nobody knows when he's going to arrive, but the wise servant should watch when the Lord returns. The wise servant should be at least in tune to the fact that any moment the Lord may enter the house. And so servants should have an attitude of expectancy that the Lord may come today, he may come tomorrow, but he indeed will return. Because he may come at any hour. He may come at any time, but my responsibility is to maintain the house and wait till the Lord returns. And don't act as if that God has given me or the Lord has given me responsibility without obligation. So if God left me in charge, he expects me to be diligent. He's given me responsibility. He's given me a task. He's given me an assignment. And my responsibility as a faithful servant is that I not only watch, but I fulfill my obligation. I fulfill my obligation. Look at our text here. Look at our text. St. Luke 12 and 42. It, 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 it is so paramount that Jesus was so specific in what he spoke. He didn't mix his words. What he said was what he meant. And those that heard him had an opportunity to receive life and life abundant as they sat at the foot of Jesus. Jesus said on one occasion when people were mobbing him and thronging him and everywhere he turned people were around him and he took a little child and pulled him in the midst and said, except you become like a little child. He said, you can't come into the kingdom of God. You can't even know the things of God except you have a mind of humility and be able to receive your assignment. Glory to God with humility. Amen. Be able to receive whatever I give you with humility. Look at our text here. And the Lord said, who then is that faithful servant and wise servant whom his Lord shall make ruler over his household to give them their portion of meat in due season? Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Of a truth, I say unto you, that he will make him ruler over all that he hath. Our Lord, my Lord, your Lord has power and authority in his hand if he chooses to bestow it. And if he chooses to bestow it, we the recipients can be faithful to receive it. So whatever God's assignment is for your life, whatever authority and power he releases in your life, you have to be faithful enough to receive it and walk in the honor and the integrity to which he released it in your life. If God has elevated you, then you ought to be humble in your elevation. If God has bestowed great things to you, you ought to be humble in your gifting and in your giving. Mm -hmm. There was a parable Jesus gave where a man had barns and he had so much wealth, he said, listen, I'm going to build more barns. He lost sight 
of his obligation. He lost sight of the fact that too much is given. Mm -hmm. Much is required. He lost sight of the fact that he was not a God unto himself. Yeah. But that the Lord of the harvest, the Lord who sits on the circle of the earth, has life and breath in his hand. The authority of God is given. Authority is power. Mm -hmm. And it must be honored with respect. Yeah. God didn't give us authority and power to have a show-off spirit. But God allowed our assignment to be such that it would honor him. Sin or saint, doesn't matter who you are. Whatever your assignment, God said walk gingerly with respect and so that you can bring honor to your responsibility. Honor to your position. Honor to the task that is assigned your hand. Psalm 62 and 11 says this, God has spoken once, twice have I heard this, that power belongs to God. Mm -hmm. So whatever authority you have, whatever responsibility you have, whatever assignment you have, God gave you the power to perform, perform it. Mm -hmm. God gave you the power to fulfill it. When much is given, glory to God, much is required. God doesn't just haphazardly drop gifts and drop stuff in your life in order for you to be not responsible to it. Mm -hmm. Oh, God, I thank you. Even when the disciples asked Jesus on one occasion, Lord, teach us to pray. Even as John taught his disciples mm -hmm. to pray, he said, Lord, teach us to pray because we want to we wanna pray in the same mindset of John. We want to pray in the same strength of John. And the Lord said, okay. He said, when you pray, mm -hmm. pray in this manner. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Now understand this, the Lord's prayer begins with not only adoration, mm -hmm. but confirmation of who God is. Mm -hmm. He said, listen, even when you communicate to me, I want a level of regard and respect so that you understand that there is a responsibility there is a qualification when you pray so that you give me the adoration and the respect and the honor Do my name. Mm -hmm. It's not just words out of your mouth. It's not just something you say. He said, listen, give it honor and adoration because this is the confirmation of who I am. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. He said, you not only confirm who I am, you honor who I am. And when you look at the Lord's Prayer, it ends with almost an affirmation. It goes from a confirmation to an affirmation because it says, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God gets the glory. Thank you, Lord. All that you have, all that you are, God has given to you. So he says, because I've given to you, when much is given, he said, much is required. It's not just there to be wasteful. It's not just there to be careless. Oh, God, I thank you. Look at the rest of it. Go back to our text here, Luke 12, 45. He said, but if, this, but if that servant say in his heart, my Lord delayeth his coming, and shall begin to beat the men's servants and maidens and to eat and to drink, to be drunken, the Lord of that servant will come in a day when he looketh not for him. Mm -hmm. And in an hour when he is not aware, will cut him in sunder and will appoint him his portion with the unbelievers. And the servant which knew his Lord's will and prepared not himself, neither did according to his will, shall be beaten with many stripes. 
But he that knew not and did not commit worthy of stripes shall be beaten with few stripes. For unto whomsoever much is given, of him shall be much required. And to whom men have committed much, of him they will, they will ask the more. It is interesting to note in our text that the unfaithful servant is still no less a servant. He didn't call him a heathen. He said he was just unfaithful to the task that was assigned to him. And because of his unfaithfulness, he would, he would have to give an account for how he lived and how he handled what was given to him. Everything you have in this life has been given to you and allowed to you by God. So God said, listen, I got the authority over. And if I left such in charge with you, I expect you to be responsible. Now, if you didn't know what to do and you were ignorant of what I asked, he said, you'll be uh, accountable to less stripes. But if you knew what, that I was coming and you, were, and you uh, willingly did what you did, he said, you're going to have many stripes. In other words, when much is given, yeah. mm, much is required. The unfaithful servant was no less uh, uh, unfaithful. He was uh, not responsible. Even in regard to what he had been given, whether he was slowful, he was. Whether he was careless, he was. Whether he was arrogant, was, whether he was hateful and had no boundaries, he was. The authority that was given to him was to be faithful. He was not given an option to have anything less than the servant who was faithful than to be faithful. So just because you were slowful, it's no excuse. Just because you were careless, it was no excuse. Just because you did as you pleased, it was no excuse. A servant ought to have a character. As I was reading this, the Lord brought back that text. Oftentimes when you talk to believers, a lot of them will quote Romans 12, 1 and 2, where Paul beseeches the church at Rome. He says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Then he says in the second verse, that be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you might prove what is that good and acceptable will of God. So the apostle says, if you're going to follow God, and, and God is your, uh, your Lord, and you're, and you're doing what God has called you to do, he said, I beseech you, I beg you, by the mercy of God, he said, basically, walk in accordance to what God has said so that your walk will be such that you can prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Yes. A servant knows as he walks in faith believing what God requires. As I was reading this, I said, this is not only an anthem or a word to believers to encourage them to be faithful. David spoke of the same principle in the book of Psalms. He spoke of the same principle, nothing new. And he was spoken in generalities to, to humankind itself. The Bible says in, in um, Psalms 19 and 14, and many people have heard this and many people quote it. I don't think everybody believes it, but many people quote it. It says in Psalms 19 and 14, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. So therefore, the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, uh, of my heart are connected. So therefore, what I speak is, is a, a culmination of what I thought. And as I think, I, I should be in regard of the fact that God is my redeemer, he's my Lord, and he's the one to whom I owe all my responsibility to because he's given me the authority to walk in his purpose. Yes. So therefore, I'm still held accountable. I'm still being charged by the word of God 
to not only watch what I say, but watch how I think. So that God can get the glory Amen. and be magnified. Amen. God has the power over all his creation. He ordained it. God is the one that spoke light into existence. God is the one that knelt down and breathed into the clay and man became a living soul. It is his responsibility. It's part of his ordination for man. He ordained it. He spoke it before the foundation of the world. The Bible says in Romans 13 and 1, let every soul, yeah. everybody, sinner and saint, let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. We ought to be responsible by choice. We ought to be humble by choice. We ought to be law-abiding by choice. Because the scripture says, let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. Why? Because for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained by God. God lets the sun and the moon and the earth rotate. God allows the functionality of nations and, and listen and countries and governments to operate. For God has ordained the power. Yes, thank you, Lord. But God is supreme over all power. There's nobody bigger than God. There's nobody greater than God. God has ordained the power and the authority. And if God chooses, oh God, I thank you. He can pick one up and take one down. Because he has the power. He ordained it. He is sovereign over all that he has created. Romans 12, and, uh, 13 and 2 says this. Whosoever that resist, whosoever therefore resisted the power Resisted the ordinance of God, mm -hmm. and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. Wow. God says, I'm in charge. And if you resist my authority and my influence, he said, you're not going to receive good things. He said, you're going to receive damnation mm -hmm. because you resisted my power that I ordained. Jesus, thank you, Lord. The Bible says in James, every good gift and every perfect gift yeah. comes from the Father of lights, mm -hmm. to whom is no variableness, nor changing. In other words, God said, I can't change. I take authority right. over everything. Yeah. And God makes no apologies to anybody. When much is given, much is required. Look at a few things here that what God gives when he gives authority. When authority is given, God requires surrender. An attitude of gratitude. You ought to be thankful that God has blessed your life. Yeah. You ought to be thankful that you have the job you have. You ought to be thankful that God has spared you from corruption. Mm -hmm. You ought to be thankful that God yet has a roof over your head. An attitude of gratitude. An attitude of being grateful. First Chronicles 16 and 34 says this. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. You are not a free agent, for his mercy endureth forever. When God gives authority, whoo, God requires glory to God surrender. I said, listen, if you're going to surrender to me, he said, you ought to have an attitude of gratitude, yes. an yes. attitude of thankfulness. When God gives authority, he requires service, not servitude, but service. In other words, you ought to be willing to understand that I'm a servant and not the Lord. You ought to be willing to understand that it's about God and not about me. Yes. That God has me in this peculiar position mm -hmm. 
And because I'm in this position, God has called me to be faithful. So it's not about servitude. It's about service. Oh, God, I thank you. God has called me in whatever responsibility you occupy to serve. Not only surrender and love God with your whole heart and be joyful and thankful and gracious, but also to serve with excellence, to serve with character, to serve with humility. Psalms 100 says this, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye land. Serve the Lord with gladness, not madness. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. This is the mindset of a servant. Being of a surrender, uh, uh, an attitude of surrender. Being joyful. An attitude of service. Serving God. Not being served. Jesus said that on one occasion. He said, I didn't come to be served, which he ought to have been, but he said, I've come to serve. Yes, thank you, Lord. So there's an attitude of service. When much is given, much is required. When God gives authority, he requires stewardship, not a hired servant. God says it's your responsibility to uphold your God-given talent or God-given place or God-given responsibility. He said it's yours. Be a good steward. Yes, thank I've given you this. I've allowed this to happen in your life. He said, be a good steward over it. Don't waste it. Don't abuse it. Don't allow it to, to cause you to take authority over somebody that's not your right. Yes. Be a good steward. You don't own it. God said, I left you to watch the house. I didn't give you the house. Amen. Jesus. Be a good steward. Thank you, Lord. And not a hired servant. Matthew 25 and 21 says this. When Jesus gave the parable of the good, uh, faithful servant and the unfaithful, he says this. Matthew 25 and 21. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thy good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. Amen. All that you have, God gave you. All the responsibility and the placement in life, God placed you there. He allowed it. He chose it to be. So God said, be a good steward in it. So that I can applaud you at the end and say, you've been faithful over a few things. He said, I'm going to make you ruler over many. Amen. Oh God, I thank you for your word. When authority is given, God requires not only surrender, but submission. Not arrogance and pride. Yes, thank you. Oh, God. You can't operate in the house with pride. You can't operate in your position with arrogance. God said, listen, I want you to be humble. I want you to submit to me. I want you to have a, a, an attitude of submission so that I can, uh, 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 listen, coordinate your life, move your life, allow your life to be such that it brings glory to the house. But when God gives authority, he wants you to be, have submission. Oh God, not be arrogant and full of pride. Matthew 23 and 12 says this, and whosoever shall exalt himself, mm, shall be abased. And he that humbleth himself mm -hmm. shall be exalted. God said, listen, even in your elevation, it is for God's glory. Even in your blessing, it is for God's glory. So God said, listen, humble yourself. The scripture says, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he might exalt you in due time. God has a purpose and a plan for each of our lives, sinner and saint. But God's determination is that we love him and allow him to guide and direct our lives so that we can get, he can get more glory to his name. I was, I was reading this and it didn't take long for me to think of 
King Saul in 1 Samuel in the Old Testament. King Saul, they say, was a tall man. Actually, he was selected by the people because of his size, his height. The Bible says he almost towered above everybody. And everybody thought he was at least God's man. He was whom God would choose. And the prophet was upset. Samuel was upset because all the while the prophet Samuel would bring the word from the Lord to the people. And now the people said, we want to be like everybody else. We want a king. And Saul was chosen because he was like everybody else. And God allowed it. See, a power and authority is ordained by God. And God allowed it. But Saul did not take into account that where much is given, yeah. Much is required. Saul was okay until they began to boast about him. Saul was okay until the authority began to overwhelm him. Saul was okay until God asked him to do a specific thing. And he chose out of his own capacity to do it his way. That's one thing you need to understand. That if God has given you assignment, God will give you the instructions, if you trust him and be faithful, to fulfill the assignment. God ordains the authority, so therefore God has the rule book in order for you to be effective. And Saul didn't do what God told him to do. He was told to kill the king of the Amalekites, and he didn't do it. And Samuel came to him and said, listen, did you do what God told you to do? And he said, yeah, I did it. He said, how come I hear these sounds in my ear? You were supposed to destroy everything. And that day, God's spirit, God's anointing or authority that was over Saul, only to appease the people, was lifted. But God always has a plan. God always has Listen, listen, a ram in the bush. So God said, Samuel, don't keep weeping over Saul. He said, I found me a man, glory to God, after mine own heart, who shall fulfill my will. He was speaking, of course, of David. David was a young boy. He was, listen, he was watching sheep. And he was called into the house of his father Jesse and all his brothers. And they anointed him uh, in the presence of Samuel. Mm -hmm. mm. Samuel anointed him because Samuel thought, just like he did about Saul, everybody else looked like a king. David looked like a boy, and yet God anointed him. Yeah. And it was almost 20 years later before David took the throne, but God's hand was on David. But understand this now, even though David was God's man, when much is given, much is required. So David had all that he could want for. He had all that he could wish for. As a matter of fact, his responsibility and his, his authority as king was over everybody. Everybody had heard of David. Everybody, listen, everybody was blessed because he was a warrior. Everybody was blessed because David just had a heart for God. But David, David saw fit to not only have those that were given to him, but he sought to take another man's wife. Mm. She didn't belong to David. She belonged to Uriah. But David sought to take her. And he did. And if you read the story, you know that he conspired to take her. Not only did he conspire, he conspired to have Uriah, Uriah which it was, murdered, put to death, put in the forefront of a battle so that he would die and that David could take his wife. Now the interesting thing about David, David was still king. He still was lord over all that he had. He still had what he had. 
But God wasn't pleased because when much is given, mm, much is required. So the prophet Nathan comes to David and begins to tell David a story. And it's interesting that he would tell David a story because David uh, probably authored most of the Psalms and most of them are songs and or hymns. And the interesting part is David was accustomed to hearing things that, that, that kind of had a story. So the prophet Nathan says to him, listen, a man had a lot of sheep. Another man had one sheep or one lamb. And he tells David, and he said, the man that had everything, glory to God, you got to get this. The man that had everything took the one lamb from the one who only had one. And David, in his fury, David, in his anger, said, Lord, he said, put him to death. Bring him here. David was angry that a person who had so much could take from one who had nothing, or at least very little. David said, bring me the man. Nathan looks at him and says, David, thou art the man. Even though he was God's servant, he was unfaithful in his assignment. Even though he was God's servant, he disregarded his authority. Even though he was God's servant, God held him accountable. Look at our text. I just want to pick it up right here. In 2 Samuel, the 12th chapter, the 7th verse. And David, and Nathan said to David, thou art the man. You have to read this and really get the gist of it because David had everything he needed. He didn't lack a thing. God had opened up the kingdom to the authority of David. Actually, when you listen now, they talk about the kingdom of David, which is thousands of years ago, the Christ, our Christ, came out through the line of David. So David was no lightweight. But yet he failed his assignment by overstepping his authority and realizing and thinking that he was the Lord of the house and not a servant. It's glory to God. I don't care what position you occupy. You don't own the house. Look at this now. And Nathan said to David, Thou art the man, thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I, oh God, you gotta hear this. I anointed thee king over Israel. I delivered thee out of the hand of Saul, of Saul. And I gave thee thy master's house, thy master's wives, into thy bosom. I gave thee the house of Israel and Judah. And if that had been too little, glory to God, he said, listen, I would moreover have given unto thee such and such things. Mm, wow. I gave you everything. Mm, 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 mm. You didn't even ask for it, but I gave it. Mm. Therefore, you have a responsibility to be a good servant. Mm, look at this now. He says, listen, in the ninth verse, wherefore hast thou despised the commandment of the Lord to do evil in his sight? Who gave you the gall to do wrong when you own everything? Who gave you the right to abuse your authority when your authority was ordained by me? Jesus. Look at this now. Thou hast killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword and hast taken his wife to be thy wife and hast slain him with the sword of the children of Adam. Now, therefore, listen to this now. Here is the part that God said, listen, you ain't getting away with this, David. I, I still love you, you're still mine, you still have authority, but you gotta have a consequence. He said, listen, now therefore the sword shall never depart out of your house because thou hast despised me and hast taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be thy wife. Thus saith the Lord, behold, I will raise up evil against thee out of thine house, and I will take thy wives before thine eyes and give them unto thy neighbor, and he shall lie with thy wives in the sight of this son. 
in the sight of this son. He said, listen, I'm going to take what I gave you because I gave it to you and you didn't regard it as a gift. You didn't regard it as a responsibility. You thought because you had much, you earned much. But he said, where much is given, glory to God. He said, much is required. Yeah. Hmm. I didn't put you in that place, David, as king, in order for you to be abusive. I didn't put you in that place of authority, David, in order for you to, you listen, to usurp your authority. He said, oh, everything I gave you. I'm going to bring up evil in your house. And if you know the story of David, after this incident, the, the child that was the baby of him and uh, Bathsheba, she, the first child died. And then God gave him Solomon, mm, the second child. What was interesting is, is that when the baby was born and got sick, David prayed and fasted and the child died. Because God said, I'm going to bring up evil in your house. The child died. And the, listen, the servants of the house, oh God, I thank you. You got to look at this. The servants knew enough to serve. And they said, Master, why are you getting up, washing your face, refreshing yourself? He said, the child has died. Mm. David understood authority. He said, there's no more need to pray about it. There's no more need to trust God to do anything else. Basically, he said, Lord, thy will be done. Because he had heard what God said. There's a consequence to abusing your authority when God has ordained it in your life. Look at this now. Oh, God, I thank you. He said, the gift that I have. Now, look at this, the 12th verse. Look. He said, for you, for thou did it in secret, for thou did it secretly. But I will do this thing before all uh, Israel and before and before the sun. God said, you did this thing in the dark. Glory to God. But I'm going to bring it to the light. Yes. That's why I believe that when much is given, Amen. much is required. I ask God to pull the covers back off the lie. I ask God to pull the stuff. I don't know if we can stand to see everything under the cover. I don't think we can stand everything that's done in the dark to be brought to the light. So God's got to give it to us at a little bit at a time. Thank God for the Holy Ghost that insulates us so that we don't bear the burden of the sin, of the evil, that's transpiring even before us. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Yes. That God gives us the strength yes. to stand. Thank you, Lord. David did it in secret. He thought. Him being the king, he had a right to do it. He thought. But God says, I left you to watch the house. Glory to God. You didn't own the house, David. So what you did in the house, I'm going to make it known to the world. Jesus. So that everybody will know mm, that when much is given, mm. he said, much is required. Our key verse is out of St. Luke 12, 48. The B portion of that verse. But before that, when authority is given, it requires surrender, service, stewardship, and submission. That's all a part of walking in the authority and the plan of God. St. Luke 12, 48 B, for unto whomsoever much is given. You don't own the house, sir. You watch the house. You watch for the Lord of the house. You wait on the Lord of the house to come. You want to hear him say, well done. So you listen. You are faithful to your assignment. Yes. It's not your house. It's God's house. He ordained me. I don't care if you're a pastor. I don't care if you're a father. I don't care what responsibility you earn or own. It's not yours. It's been ordained by God. 
that you might have authority over it. And if it's violated, when much is given, much is required. Our text says this, for unto, for unto whomsoever much is given, of him shall be, uh, be much required. And to whom have men have committed much, of him they will ask the more. When much is given. Mm. Submission. Surrender. Service. Stewardship. When much is given. Yes. He said much is required. Maybe there's someone this morning Thank you. Thank you. that has lost sight mm -hmm. of their purpose. You've lost sight of the fact that God has given you or called you to an assignment. Thank you, Lord. God says, listen, I still love you because I'm still speaking to you. Yes. And you that don't know Jesus Christ, that have been caught up in the melee of lies and foolishness and the perilous times we live in, God said, listen, I still call you to an assignment. Because I ordain power. I sit on the circle of the earth to let you know, listen, I'm calling you to stewardship. I'm calling you to submission. I'm calling you to service. I'm calling you to all that comes along with my authority if you put your trust in me. Thank you, Lord. The Bible says in Romans 10, 9 and 10, Thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. And believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. When you believe in Jesus Christ, you confess what you believe. If you don't know the Lord today, ask him, Lord, come into my life. Now understand this, when you call him Lord, you're calling him Master. And when you call him Master, you're obligating yourself to trust his instructions, to trust his word yes. so that you might walk as well as grow thereby. St. John 3.16 says this, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting Here's your opportunity, beloved, to know Jesus Christ and be able to be the recipient yes. of his grace, his mercy, his authority, and God knows his power mm -hmm. when you put your trust in him. I pray right now, Father, in the name of Jesus, all yes. them that have prayed the prayer of faith and said, Lord, save me, come into my life. Forgive me of my sins and become Savior and Lord over my life. Jesus. So that I might be the recipient mm -hmm. of your grace, yes. the recipient of your giving, yes. the recipient of your life in me. That I might become a new creature because I put my trust in you. Yes. Anyone that has prayed that prayer this morning, you have become a believer. And you can thank the Lord for salvation. Not only did he save you, mm -hmm. but now he's looking for surrender from your life mm -hmm. to his will, his way, oh God, and his word so that your life can be changed. And you too can say, this is the day mm -hmm. that the Lord hath made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Yes. Amen, amen. Truly, we bless the Lord this morning. We thank him. Because God has called us all to an assignment. Yes. When much is given, beloved, much is required. It doesn't, uh, doesn't matter the size of your task. Mm -hmm. It doesn't remember, uh, matter the, the, the calling on your life. But what does matter is that you honor God with obedience so that your life can be made unto his life mm -hmm. and that you can walk as a new creature. Truly we bless the Lord. We thank you for your patience. Thank you, Lord. We thank you for your time. We thank you for your gifts. We at New Beginnings Christian Church here in Philadelphia, we thank you. We praise God for his, his, his willingness and the opportunity he gives us to reach people. 
with the gospel of Jesus Christ. We ask that if you desire to send correspondence and or even an offering to this ministry, we can be reached through our P.O. Box NBCC, P.O. Box 551, Shell Fund, PA, 18914. If you choose uh, electronically, we are on the Cash App. Cash App is NBCC. Uh, uh, Cash App is dollar sign NBCC P Satch. We are also can be seen on YouTube as well as Facebook. But we thank you for your time and we thank you that we can continue to pray and believe God for your well-being. Yes. We pray for our election coming up. We pray for a safe and fair election. Mm -hmm. We pray. We come against the lies. We come against the drama. We come against the world that would cause confusion because confusion is not of God. Confusion is of the devil. So we curse the enemy right now and speak peace, speak safety to all that will uh, take the opportunity as a citizen and vote. We, we ask for freedom, we ask for safety, and we ask for opportunity that you're able to vote. This is a free land, so we ask for that responsibility to yet be upheld. We also pray for all them that are struggling right now with the coronavirus, we pray for them. God, we curse that virus at its root. We know the numbers are growing, but we pray for the safety of our immediate families and them under the circle of our influence. Yes. Them that may be dealing with it right now, we curse the virus yes. in the matchless name of Jesus. We come against also all manner of illness and sickness that people might be dealing with right now. Diabetes, high blood pressure, whatever it is, cancer, we curse all the afflictions of man right now in the name of Jesus and speak health to the body and mind of them under the sound of my voice. Yes. God, we love you this morning and yes, thank you for who you thank are. You, we ask you to continue to bless us as we put our trust in you. And God, we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.